So this is my happy and healthy sourdough starter. It's been quite the journey, but if you guys would like to see how I achieved these results and how I even baked my first loaf with success with this little guy, just keep watching. You can learn from my mistakes as I show you some trial and errors in getting this starter to where he is today. This is after about two weeks or so, and he looks great right away when I realized that he had trouble growing. I figured out what to do to successfully have him bubble up and continue to rise and he's quite the active and happy little guy. Casanova is what I named him so if you guys want to see our story together from the very beginning vlog style I'm going to teach you how to make a sourdough starter so if you follow along with my tips and keep watching until the very end you too can achieve these results. So guys if you want to know how to make a sourdough starter from scratch just keep watching. Okay, so Jules and I are trying to make a sourdough starter. We saw a couple recipes, watched a few videos on YouTube, and I think we're ready. So the ratio we're going with is 100 grams of flour, and we're using whole wheat flour to 130 grams of water. And we're putting it in glass jars. You need to use glass jars. I have this old glass mason jar that still has a lid, which I'm really excited about. So we're using this lovely glass jar. Jules is also using a glass jar. Hers has a wider lid, so it's actually probably easier for mixing. And yeah, so right now we measured our flour, 100 grams, and now we are doing our water. We're waiting for it to get to a sort of ambient warm temperature, lukewarm if you will, of 85 degrees. So what is so cool about that is we are using flour and water in order to ferment that and make our own leavening for bread. This is why sourdough is so cool. <laughs> As you can see from other recipes, a lot of people do an equal amount, a lot of people do even more water, so we kind of went the middle way and did 100 grams of flour and 130 grams of water. Okay, so after we added the water to the flour, we are going to mix this really well until we see no flour lumps inside whatsoever. So now that it is mixed and there should be no bits of flour, we are going to pop a loose fitting lid on top and we're going to leave this for pretty much 24 hours at room temperature. So this is day one and it should look like a nice thick paste. You should mix it well so there is no flour lumps in it and now you're going to place the lid on and let it sit for 24 hours. It could even be up to 48 hours if it doesn't look ready to be fed. So you kind of want to see some active bubbles in order to proceed with your day two discarding and adding more things. So I will see you guys tomorrow. So Jules and I have our starters. It's almost 24 hours, not quite, and mine looks hungry, so I'm going to feed him at the 24 hour mark, which is at six o'clock. Julia did hers in this pickle jar, so it literally smells a little <laughs> bit like pickles. This is what we're working with But now, look, right? it's like bubbling away, so maybe, <laughs> maybe the acidity from the pickles is a hack. I'm working on a new jar soon. <laughs> yeah, so we're really excited to feed these little guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to scoop out all but 70 grams of the starter, and then we are going to add some more flour and some more water. Okay, so the reason why it's really important to weigh your jar before anything is in it, because you need to know how much starter you are discarding in order to be left with 70 grams. So my jar weighs 452, Julia's weighs a little bit less, 392. So in the end, I should have 522 grams in my jar. That's exactly what my jar is going to weigh with 70 grams of discard and Julia is going to weigh 462. So that is what we have to do first before we can feed it. And then for our first feed, we're going to do 100 grams of flour. We are using all-purpose flour, right? Yeah, just unbleached all-purpose flour. Unbleached all-purpose flour. It's really important to not have any bleached flour when you're doing this. And then we're also going to be using 115 grams of lukewarm water, no more than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you guys can see, as 24 hours has passed, look how bubbly mine and Julia's starters are. They are like, wow, look how bubbly Julia's are. They're so oh bubbly and active. They actually look great. So I'm sad to discard this little guy and see him go, but it's time for the second feeding. So let's discard all but 70 grams of this starter. Okay, so she just added 100 grams of the flour and now she's adding 115 grams of the water. I already added it to mine and now I'm going to begin mixing again the same as we did on the first day, just Are vigorously mixing until it's now <laughs> nice and warm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Now we're taking out all but 70 grams. So again, my jar weight plus the 70 grams, I'm going to be left with 522 grams in my jar. This, by the way, is how he looks on day three. So he's quite bubbly and he smells a bit. <laughs> Nothing too strange, but he's a bit smelly and he looks hungry. There's a little bit of 
There's a little bit of water separation, so I'm gonna remove this guy, all the 70 grams, which seems like a lot, but that's what you have to do. And then we're going to feed him again. So we're gonna feed him 100 grams of the flour, and then, yeah, 110 grams of water. So you might have seen me with this list, but this is kind of like messy because it's a combination of a few recipes. And I finally figured out the formula that hopefully is going to work best for us. So this is how we started our day two. And every day we sort of lose five grams of water until day five when we change the amount of starter as well as water. Once you reach day seven, this is going to be what your sourdough starter will need forever or every feeding, basically every discard and feeding. So as long as it's out at room temperature, you will have to feed it every 24 hours. Okay guys, it is day four of our starter. So today is going to be removing everything but 70 grams of the starter, which is going to make my jar weigh 522. And then we're going to add 100 grams of flour and 105 grams of water today. This oh. is my starter, there's quite a few bubbles. It just smells so bad, guys. I hate this smell. I wonder it if that's normal. Like sour cream. Yeah, it doesn't smell like putrid or anything, but it just doesn't have a very pleasant smell at all. So right now my jar with the starter weighs about 721 grams. And like I said, today it is supposed to weigh 522 grams so I have to remove that much starter from it which seems like a waste but in the end you remove a lot of starter that way you don't have to feed it that much so technically you're saving. So here's the flour and water added to the jar with the 70 grams of starter and I'm just going to mix this up until there are no more lumps and it's going to of course be nice and thick like peanut butter. Okay guys, so today is day five. We need only 50 grams of starter left in our jar. So today, because unlike yesterday, it was 70 grams of starter, today is 50 grams of starter, meaning my jar is going to be weighing 20 grams less, so 502. Once it weighs 502, I'm going to be adding 100 grams of the flour and 100 grams of the water. And then we are going to mix vigorously. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've scraped down as much as I possibly could of the jar because you want to really incorporate all of that starter that's going to be clinging to the sides once you empty it out. I really empty it out by pouring it into the garbage. <laughs> I feel like it's already starting to bubble away. So my starter is quite active, so he looks pretty good so far. Now I'm going to put the lid on and place him in my cover. I've just been keeping him in my cupboard you kind of want to keep him in a warm spot okay so I didn't even film yesterday because yesterday was just the same as day five so day five and six are the same 50 grams of the starter now today is day seven and this is what we're going to be doing now until forever basically is we're only going to use 25 grams of starter so 25 grams of starter plus 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. And now you can tell, I can see actually quite a bit of rise, so I'm happy about that. This sourdough starter seems to have risen. You can see the volume here, that's why it's good to scrape down your jar when you're mixing it. So it's nice and clean and you can see if there's activity. I do have quite a bit of activity, so you can see it rose and fell. There are bubbles inside, so it's looking pretty healthy so far. I still, guys, I hate the smell of this. It just smells like sour cream to me. Not that it smells rancid or anything. It just smells really tangy, but not in a pleasant way, I would say. It's just definitely not one of my favorite smells. I'd like to definitely make some bread with this sourdough starter before I release this video. So guys, if you're seeing this video, then you know I've successfully made a sourdough bread with this starter. Now, what I did was I cleaned out my jar as best as I could without using soap because I feel like soap is not good. And I wanna have a nice clean jar for when I'm starting the rest of my feedings because I felt like I had a lot of weight around the rim and I just wanna be pretty accurate for this last feeding of only 25 grams of starter. So I'm going to be adding the flour and the water to this bowl right now, giving it a mix and then transferring it in this lovely jar maybe giving it a couple more mixes just to make sure it's nice and incorporated and then I'm going to store it again so I'll show you what that looks like now with a clean jar now I'll really be able to see how much it's risen and I feel like the amount is pretty exact so I'm happy I did this for the last day of the feeding so day seven okay guys so you can see some things are different today actually many things are different and I'm going to be talking about that First of all, the jar is new. Jules found this amazing jar at the dollar store. There's something that we can actually write a name on here. So when we finally name this sourdough starter, I'm going to write the name of him. And then you can see that the lip is so much bigger. It's almost as wide as the jar. So it's so easy for mixing for me because my um, jar from last time, it was a little bit of a tight mouth. So I'd really have to 
try hard to get everything mixed up. So this is just so much easier, I can already tell. Our starters have not been rising enough. They've been very active and bubbly, but they have not been rising. So as you know, if they don't rise enough, you can't really make the sourdough yet, which is why we haven't made it. And it's been over a little bit over a week since we started this whole process. So we were reading up about things and we're going to do things differently this time. First of all, we are going to be incorporating half and half of a mixture. So we're doing half whole wheat and then half of the unbleached all-purpose flour that we were using. We started off with whole wheat and mine had so much more activity with the whole wheat. And then when we switched over to the unbleached flour, like a lot of people recommend using flour that you're going to be making your bread with. So because I wouldn't be making a lot of whole wheat, I wanted to be using more all-purpose flour, I guess you can say. We were doing that and it just wasn't active enough. So we are going to be giving them from now on a half and half feed. So we are still doing the 25 grams of starter and then we are going to be doing 50 grams of whole wheat flour and then 50 grams of the unbleached all-purpose flour. And then of course the 100 grams of water mixing that up and we are going to see how that is going to be working for us for the next couple of days. I will report back and let you guys know how this is going, but for now I'm going to be continuing with the same feed and we will see how that goes for us. So hopefully this little baby's rising. My starter and Julia's starter. Julia's looks like, well she basically did a refeed because she took her starter out and she's going to attempt to make sourdough today. He has totally transformed. Yesterday he was very bubbly but he wasn't really rising at all so I fed him, well now we're on the feeding of giving them half and half, so half whole wheat and half just all purpose, and that's been so much better. And on top of that, if your starter still isn't rising enough, what you can do is just give it a little bit less water, so I would say like five to 10 grams less water and maybe five to 10 grams more flour, and then look, look at him today, he has completely risen. He used to be this height, even a little bit shorter, and now look at him, he's over double his size, so. He looks phenomenal and I've been feeding him in the morning now, which is a lot easier for me. So there are our sourdough starters, guys. It's been quite the process, but hopefully this journey will not be for nothing and we will have some delicious sourdough bread in the future. So this is my new morning routine with little Casanova. You can see there's quite a bit of bubbling and you can see that he went down after rising, which is totally normal. This is how much he rose right up to here, you can see. So that is a really good sign. Now I feed him in the morning. Right now he weighs 661, but when I take out everything but 25 grams, he's going to weigh about 447, I believe. So let's do that now. And what I usually do honestly is, lately, I feel like it's been working better, is giving him a mix first and then dumping him. So he's thicker. He feels like a really gooey peanut butter, just a thick, gooey peanut butter. I would say more like a slimy peanut butter is sort of the texture, since I've been feeding him a little bit more flour than water, just maybe a 10 gram difference. He just feels definitely thicker and he really likes this feeding. So now that he's all mixed up, I'm just gonna tuck him away. So right now it's the morning, it's barely 10 o'clock. We will see him at 10 p.m., even 9 p.m. We will see him in a bit and he should be much higher. Guys, look at beautiful little Casanova. He has risen. You saw before that he wasn't doing the greatest and with those few tricks, he is seriously thriving. He looks amazing. I really stand by the fact that you should give them half whole wheat and half all purpose. I think that was the key. And be really diligent with the water. Don't give any more than exactly 100 grams. In fact, you could even give about five grams less. So you can give 95 grams of water if your starter is giving you trouble. So I'm going to make some bread and I was just squishing him down to pick some up and you can see how active and bubbly he has been. He's such a good starter. I'm so proud of him. Just made this beautiful sourdough loaf. Look how good this looks. This is my second loaf and it's stunning, even better than the first. And it's doubled. Look how nice it looks. Beautiful, I'm so proud of it. Be careful, it's really hot. <laughs> He's excited. My humble little sourdough starter, Casanova, made this stunning sourdough loaf. I'm not gonna cut into it for at least an hour to two hours, I would say, because then you can ruin the texture on the inside. But he looks stunning, so pretty so rustic and artisanal i can't wait to try him wow he's a really really pretty loaf and i'm very proud since i did make a loaf today and i had to do another feeding i used my discards to make crackers so there's crackers in the oven hopefully they come out good and again if you guys want to see a recipe on anything please let me know guys the texture on this is perfect he's soft on the inside but he's also firm so he's not gummy at all he's nice and soft and chewy and he's really crisp and crunchy on the outside 
you can see how perfect this look how pretty that looks too you can just see how perfect this loaf of bread is so he was very very successful oh the smell is so good i'm gonna eat this with butter and um, there's really nothing better guys i mean what is better than a fresh sourdough bread and butter few things really so i'm very happy about this so my starter is a success little casanova really delivered and I'm super proud of him. He's great and created such a lovely loaf of sourdough bread. And by the way, this is a vlog style, so I hope you don't mind that it's super casual, but just every day my sister and I would feed our sourdough starters and do things at different times so we didn't want it to be so formal. So it's very casual, very vlog style, but it's a true journey on how amateurs like us can achieve a really nice successful sourdough starter and we've both baked bread with it and had it come out really well so we did a really good job with our sourdough and i'm super excited to have it and in the beginning i was complaining about the smell how it smelled really not pleasant and now it smells actually really nice and it kind of smells almost like how it tastes like that nice fresh sour taste if that makes sense it smells really appetizing when before it just didn't smell good so our sourdough starters are very successful and we're really happy with them there's a lot of bubbling there's a lot of rising so they're pretty great and i hope you guys can follow along with us and achieve the same results <laughs>